I don't believe there was ever a game with a better title than this one. The Curse of Monkey Island. It is not just meant to signify the curse that befell Guybrush in the previous game or the curse that befell Zelane in this game. It is the curse of the existence of the previous two games upon this game. For it will forever be tainted by their existence. The Curse of Monkey Island is a fine adventure game. Were it in its own series, were it separate from all the ones that came before it, it would have been a fantastic, superb game that everybody would have loved for what it was. But because it is part of a series that has had so far two of the best adventure games ever made, it will always fall short. And honestly, the reason why it falls short is that it always tries to follow those games up. It always tries to give you a bit of the same. It tries to be familiar. It tries to make itself feel like Monkey Island. Like you know Monkey Island is. And had it not done that, had it embraced, well, pretty much what everything else is already there, I believe it would have been a better game. The Curse of Monkey Island was made in the year 1997. That is not helmed by pretty much any of the people that worked on the previous two games. Ron Gilbert at this point was no longer working at LucasArts. Neither was Dave Grossman. Tim Schafer was the only one left and he did have some input on the development of the game, but he was busy working on the masterpiece that was Grim Fandango at the time. It was helmed by people that had not really done much in terms of defining what Monkey Island was. And in a way that could have been a fantastic thing, but they tried to make it a lot like the previous Monkey Island games, at least in terms of the way it's designed, in terms of its structure. Because in terms of its presentation it is completely out there. Yes, you still had the music by Michael Land, superb soundtrack, excellent, still had iMuse, now with the added bonus of there being a song you could participate in, with a really neat puzzle that involves you trying to insert the word orange at the end of a verse so the goddamn pirates would stop singing and get back to work. Th that was an excellent puzzle. That was something you have not found in the previous games because, you know, they didn't have music. Well, Monkey Island 2 did have that one song, but it wasn't interactive. This was the next step. This was beyond it. This was the spark of brilliance the game could have had. And the art direction. Bill Tiller's backgrounds are instantly recognizable as being only Bill Tiller's backgrounds and mostly for being in the curse of monkey island now he has made two other adventure games that i know of which do have similar styles but they're all 3d-ish those games are vampire story which honestly looks amazing and i still regret that it did not get a sequel or at least a prequel and your game is ghost pirates of Vuju island which can't say I really enjoy it all that much, even though I did try and imitate the Monkey Island formula. That actually probably was not in its favor, whereas a vampire story was utterly unique and it used Bill Tiller's style to enrich it. Ghost Pirates of Vuju Island seem kind of uh, derivative. Also, I think the translation may have been a bit weird. At least I imagine there was a translation, because parts of the game didn't make really that much sense. I, I keep imagining it, it being originally in German for some reason. And if it wasn't, then well, the game had some issues. So back to The Curse of Monkey Island. You can't confuse it with the previous games. It looks like its own game. It looks like no other LucasArts adventure game. While you could confuse some bits from Monkey Island to, for example, what bits from Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis to the um, sprite artwork being quite similar at times. This looked unique. It looked beautiful. Okay, the, the characters may have looked a bit too weird and honestly I wasn't all that mad about how Guybrush looked in this game, but still it looked like something you are not bound to see all that often. And the rest of the game never takes advantage of that. Yeah, it has voices. No other Monkey Island game before it had voices. And the voice cast does a bang up job and the dialogue is still pretty much around the same level as the previous Monkey Island games I'd say. It still breaks the fourth wall, you still travel back to previous editions of the series, you actually end up in the in the tree stump that was in the maze in Monkey Island 1 and it's done with Monkey Island 1's graphics just like the Monkey Island 2 joke. You know, do have references to the game being a sequel and maybe you know not being all that successful as a series just like the previous games dead. And there's a reference to another LucasArts adventure game, just like there was in the first one. And there's insult sword fighting only now with 
rhymes. And at the end, when you have to actually use them, you realize that pretty much everything you've learned was actually wrong. And now you have to figure out how to... Uh, that, that's also what the other one did. But you do have a fighting at sea component with your ship, which you can choose to play it in an easy way or a more difficult way. You can even upgrade the cannons on your ship to make your job easier. But quality-wise, it is kind of under Sid Meier's Pirates that was released a decade earlier, so setting it on easy and just breezing through it, not a bad idea. Apart from that bit and the bit of the song that also takes place in that chapter of the game, the Curse of Monkey Island is highly derivative. And it is derivative in one of the worst ways possible. It tries to emulate the old ones, but fails at finding what made the old ones great. Like one of the funniest puzzles in Monkey Island 1, as I said, was the bit where you get drowned, where you're tied to an idol and thrown to the sea. What's funny about that is that there are all those items that could be used to tie the rope, but they're just out of reach. When the solution is a game solution, one that cannot exist in real life, you just pick up the idol and stuff it in your pants. Voila, that's brilliance. The Curse of Monkey Island does it twice, and it does it like in quick succession. The first time it does it is with the snake. Guybrush is eaten by a snake, which is an absolutely funny thing that happens. Make no mistake, the game is bonkers funny. You will laugh out loud numerous times. It's a superb comedy. But when you're in the snake and you see all those items around you that Guybrush cannot reach like a snake clubbing club, think yourself, okay, this puzzle's gonna be neat. <laughs> this puzzle's probably gonna involve me doing something like just walking out of the head of the snake or opening a door that's in the snake's belly or something stupid like that. No, uh, it's an item combination puzzle based on the items you find in the snake's belly. Oh, and an item that you found by automatically picking it up right before you got eaten by the snake. There's no joke there. There's no cleverness there. It's just some puzzle. It could have been an epic puzzle if at least it was done in the same vein as in the first game. I mean, it's already derivative. At least prove that it's derivative for the same reason that the first one was brilliant. You know, be brilliant. Be out of there. But it wasn't. And right after you're spit out by the snake as you made it vomit, you get thrown into quicksand. In which again you have to combine items in your inventory, pick up a different sharp little thing to stuff into a uh, reed to blow at a balloon, because you couldn't use the pin that was already in your inventory since you probably needed it later, also Gabriel said it was too small. You have to pick up a similar item that's right next to you, and then use some cockamamie thing with a uh, helium balloon you had from the start for some reason. Well, you had it from the start because it's funny to talk with a squeaky voice. I should learn. Oh, I've done it for years. And you combine that balloon with a rock and then send it floating out towards a rope or a vine. Instead of, you know, doing something that would have been a bit better, a bit cleverer, a bit more Monkey Island than just any other adventure. Like one cool way would have been as you're trying to solve the puzzle the way the game, you know, hints you should do with the balloon and the rock, the rock just goes flying away like it does at first and never comes back, but the snake falls over dead and you can use it as a bridge. Like the puzzle auto solves itself and just makes that entire kind of ludicrous combination of Moon Man logic item fiddling completely pointless. That would have been a great joke because at its core that that's all the series ever was. An excuse to tell good jokes via puzzles. Puzzles that were insane but, you know, were funny enough and out there enough that it made sense. And it even tries a sort of watered down version of the action scene you never see in the first Monkey Island game on Skull Island though. Skull Island is probably the best bit of the Curse of Monkey Island. It's short. It's short as hell. But it's amazing. You keep hearing about Skull Island and when you see it, you are not prepared to see it. You are not prepared for what you're about to see. And also that is where Guybrush straight up murders someone. It was ludicrously funny. Again, the game is fantastically funny, just not... Not mechanically funny, especially if you play it in the Mega Monkey mode. The thing it did well this time around, compared to the previous one, was the way it handled difficulty. On the standard difficulty, you get the full experience of the game. In the Mega Monkey mode, you get a bunch of fiddly extra steps to do your puzzles. Steps that are a bit annoying and sometimes kind of hard to understand. And I don't actually recommend you play it in that mode. The capture is made from that mode and I used the walker because I forgot some things like you're supposed to slap Cutthroat Bill a couple of times to get a piece of hard candy that would have otherwise already been on the floor. It is absolutely meant to be a challenge. So I really can't fault the developers for that. It's just that the challenge involves doing some extra steps that aren't all that clear. 
and I rely mostly on you using everything and everything and eventually getting it right. But it is still a better way to do this than what Monkey Allen 2 did, which was they just cut out or simplified puzzles to the point where the joke was no longer there in the easier version. Sure, that was made as a slight to uh, game critics, but still it cheapened the experience a bit for the people that played it that way the first time around. And you always wanted to play it the best time the first time around, because that is when you will always best appreciate it. The first time. The first impression is always very important. And this is the third game in the series. That first impression, that, that counted for a lot. So technically this was the first one I played in the series. I didn't get around to playing the first two ones until much much later. Still, I like the game. I enjoy it. But it's it's not as good as the first two. Especially with what it does with Elaine. She is, uh, well, I wouldn't say fridged, she's statued for the entire game. She appears in the intro, then after you cure her she gets tied up and then vanishes and apparently saves your life off screen by rejiggering the uh, controls for the roller coaster that would have led you to a pit of lava and killed you. And then that's it. But hey, Stan's still here and Guybrush continues to be an absolute asshole to him. Guybrush is so mean in these games you realize after a while. He is downright evil at some points. Again, I believe he straight up murders somebody in this game. He also commits suicide like twice, or pretends suicide. The game is in the habit of making you repeat things. It's not one of its best qualities. If you want to play The Curse of Monkey Island, you can find it right now on GOG. If the GOG sale, the summer sale is still on, then you can find it for a little under four and a half euros. So that's kind of like five bucks. Oh, uh, something important. Um, In the two years I've been making shows in English on this channel, I forgot to mention something. We have an affiliate link with GOG. It's in the description. Because if you buy the game using that affiliate link, you get no extra charges, but GOG will give us a sort of reward for getting you to buy the game that's around, I don't know, uh, two, three cents or something. Should probably mention this two years ago, it'll probably have five bucks there right now. Damn. Well, no, no better. So see you next week for the game that nobody likes in the series, Escape from Monkey Island. Goodbye.